Hey, Deja here, and today we're going to talk about Riot's most hated champion, Wukong. Now, now, before you grab your pitchforks, let me jump in and explain. See, back in 2017, we got the release of the Assassin meta, where Wukong started to dominate the game. While he has been around since Season 2, he wasn't really that strong, definitely not as strong as the Assassin meta made him. To put it simply, he became a problem, especially once he got picked up mid. He used to have a flat 32 magic resist, and his old passive gave him 4-8 armour and magic resist for each nearby enemy champion. This made him have a constant 36 magic resist in lane, which jumped to 40 when getting ganked. If you rush some early magic resist in the form of Merc Treads or Hex Drinker, you could easily win every AP matchup in mid. This started to become a problem, so Riot wanted to nerf him. However, the nerfs did little to slow him down. Next step was to rework him. This was a unique situation. He went through a total of three versions with the first two being worked on by Riot Lutzberg and the last one by Riot August. It was during Lutzberg's attempts we got the famous 200 years meme after a disagreement between him and Harambe on Twitter. Keep note of this as this is what a lot of people believe broke down the relationship between Rioters and one tricks giving input on reworks and adjustments. During this time, we also got told we would see no new visuals due to Riot's art team being too busy but would get some in the future once they are free. Well, here is the first point to keep note of. The rework came out in 2020 and four years on and we still haven't received those promised visuals. Back to the rework, out of the three versions, it was heavily agreed in the Wukong community, August version was the weaker of the three. That doesn't mean it was necessarily weak, but it lacked a lot the other two versions contained. Fast forward to the release, and we got August version, which, to be fair, was quite strong on release, quickly getting hotfixed. After this hotfix, we saw two additional patches of nerfs, with Season 10 ending with him obtaining bonus monster damage on E. Season 11 was nothing but bug fixes and nerfs, making him even weaker. Then came Season 12, and to Riot's credit, they gave Wukong something we had been asking, no, begging for, since they teased it. That everyone was a wall hop. In 12.7, they dropped the buffs, giving Q a lower CD, W a longer CD late, but could now go over walls. And finally, E saw that bonus monster damage go from 50% to 80%. Insane, right? Well, us foolish monkeys didn't realize how problematic this would be. Following this patch, we got the durability patch, making Wukong tankier overall, which helped his sustain. After this, it all started to go downhill fast. Remember that insane 80% bonus monster damage on E? Well, pro players did, and it was at this point he started to be picked up in pro and showing the true potential of the monkey in the jungle. Riot, seeing how much of a problem they made, quickly started trying to fix him with nerfs, which unfortunately wasn't enough to cage the monkey. We saw further nerfs and this still wasn't enough, hitting us with more stat and passive nerfs before finishing up season 12. Season 13 didn't let up either, with every patch that season being a nerf or bug fix, except the last one which was some small mana buffs, which did nothing to fix the state he was in. It was at this point he was effectively pro jailed and we saw him have the lowest pick rate of all time, equaling a total of 2% pick rate across all servers. He was only being picked by one tricks, and even then they couldn't get his win rate higher than 47% in both top and jungle. Finally, after 8 months, we got some much needed buffs. Great, monkey saved right? Well, no. This did absolutely nothing to fix his win rate, Another two patches and we saw a great fix for the passive. Reducing the stacks from 10 to 5 while increasing the value of each stack and more importantly, stacks began to fall off one at a time. During this, Freak also talked about how Wukong should be sitting at 52% win rate in top 
as you can see here. I think Wukong, by the way, should be able to sit at like 51 and a half, 52 in top lane generically, like somewhere around like Garen, and he would be totally fine. He's relatively easy to play. He's like pretty approachable and appealing as a champion. So I think we can get him there and he wouldn't set off any alarm bells to be pretty reasonable and make him feel supported. Wukong is a very, very easy to play straightforward champion, which means his resting win rate should probably be around 52 in top lane because he's easy to play in low elo and probably around 51 in jungle. He's a little bit harder to play in jungle, but still a really straightforward champion. And so if he's balanced for solo queue, 52 top 51 jungle is probably about right for Wukong. Fast forward a few months and Wukong is currently sitting at 50% in top, which is 2% less than Freak said, and jungle is 49%. Well, what's the problem? His pick rate overall is back to 2.3%, meaning he's only being picked up by one tricks again. If one tricks can't get his win rate to the 52% Freak spoke of, it definitely won't increase from more people playing him. We are basically in the same boat we were last season. Wukong Jungle is still pro jailed with no buffs or adjustments, and by Freak's own words, Wukong Top is underperforming, yet he has been ignored every patch. Well, that sums up his patch history, but we have more to discuss. See, Wukong is one of those lucky champs who hasn't had a single legendary in the game during his 12 years in it. Even during Year of the Monkey in 2016, while we did get Radiant Wukong, which to this day is considered his best skin, and totally should have been a legendary, it's only a 1350 skin. We have no prestige, no mythic, no legendary, no ultimate, yet Wild Rift, the mobile spin-off game, gave Wukong not only a revised version of the Jade Dragon skin, they also updated it to mythic quality, and gave an alternative red version, both of which are on par with Radiant for his best skin. Not only this, remember when I said Wukong had three rework versions? Well, Wild Rift got a combination of the other two, which was ultimately a better damage focused kit. This changed however, when they changed his kit to be similar to Client, and well, they even made that better, with the clone able to move and even mimic E to dash to your target. Client on the other hand, gets one skin every two to three years, got the worst version of his rework, got promised new visuals, which we are still waiting on four years later, has been jungle pro jailed for one year, while top isn't doing what Freak himself said it should, hasn't had a single skin above the value of 1350, any cosmetics such as emotes are usually tied behind a paywall, has a better version of his current kit that fixes all these gameplay issues on Wild Rift, which they won't port to client, and let's not forget the lore, he has had the same law since his release in season 2. Overall, the champ needs some serious love. We need those visuals we were promised 4 years ago, and give us a legendary skin already, instead of giving another champion their 4th legendary skin. Give him some actual lore, because all he has is roaming around Ionia, defeating Noxians with Master Yi. Finally, give us that wild rift kit. It fixes all his issues and balances him in a way he won't dominate the jungle or mid as an assassin. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you enjoyed then don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. See ya!